Hey everyone, my name is Matt Denham and I'm one of the product managers here at IBM and my focus area is on Cognos Analytics and specifically dashboards within Cognos Analytics. So we have a new release coming out, 11.1.5. Uh, so I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some of the cool new capabilities that you'll find in dashboards in 11.1.5. So the first thing you might notice if you're taking a look at this dashboard is I've actually got my tabs along the bottom. So this is a new feature that we added uh, as a property to the dashboard. We've enhanced the, uh, the tab area here. You know, in the past, the tabs just kind of lived along the top and you could adjust the title color and the selector bar color, which you can still do. But now you can actually align the tabs to the top, the bottom, or the left or the right um, of your dashboard as you might want to do. So now it's, it's up to the author to decide where they might want that to live. Now, we can also adjust the fill color. That's new as well. So you can match the, your tabs can match the, your overall style of the dashboard, which is fantastic. And you might notice that we added some iconography as well. So if I go into one of my tabs, here we have a built-in library of a number of uh, visual cues that you can assign uh, onto your tab. And you can control where you want that, uh, that to live. If you want to th that to live at the right of the title or the left of the title, as, as I prefer, uh, you can do that now as well. Now, one of the other things that we get asked about a fair bit is the ability to drill from a dashboard to a dashboard. So this is one of the new features in the latest release as well. We'd always been able to, as of 11.10, uh, be able to drill from a dashboard to a report. And now you can pick a, a dashboard as a target as well. So the, the process is still going to be the same here. I'm going to go through. I'm going to set up my drill through definition. And then I can just pick where I want my, my dashboard target to be. So I've got a target dashboard. We'll click OK, and what this is going to do is essentially just base the selection of the that I've sort of selected here, and I'm going to pass that object uh, to my target dashboard. So you can see that I right-clicked on Coupon 2, and so I've sent it over as a filter uh, upon which my, my target dashboard is going to be filtered. Now one of the other areas that we've added um, as it relates to authoring specifically is for both relational and OLAP sources, we can now actually see the members, um, you know, traditional OLAP members, but in, in this case, I'm just looking at a spreadsheet, but I can actually expand the field and it's gonna populate with uh, a number of values uh, that exist in that field. So if I take something that's a little bit longer, say first name or, or last name, I see that I have this load more option. And so I can just keep loading uh, more and more members. And so, so this is really going to help me with filtering if I want essentially like a sub-selection of, of data elements uh, to live in my dashboard without having to do filtering after the fact. So this is, uh, again, something that a lot of people have really asked for. Uh, this is controllable at the data module level. Uh, you can specify how many uh, members uh, or values show up uh, and whether you want it to be a load more or a search or all of this is controllable by the modeler, which is fantastic. We've also added the ability to show uh, and hide rows and columns uh, in my, in my crosstab. So if I wanted to select uh, kind of mountaineering equipment here, uh, what I could do is I could hide that. And you, you see that it's still there. There's at least a visual indicator of that blue bar uh, that there is a hidden element that still exists. And I can just double click uh, to bring that back. And if I've hidden multiple objects, sort of at an unselected level here, I could show all uh, to bring everything back all at the same time. We've also added some uh, custom work here as it relates to sort of, sort of null and missing value. So if I right click this object here, which is a null, which is uh, you know basically our, our default uh, for null and missing values, is just kind of say a no value in brackets or null in, in brackets, I can put anything that I want here. So if I wanted this to be Matt's value, I could do that, uh, and you can see that all of the values are, uh, that are null or missing are replaced in my dashboard. And then finally, another area that we get asked about a fair bit is the ability to analyze performance. So if I hit control dot, I can see the, uh, the total server time and to like overall time it, it has taken for this selected visualization to render. And so this, I get some other information as well you know, the ID, the path, what the mappings are. And this pane is, you know, something I can make a little bit bigger as well. Just in terms of troubleshooting and understanding how long each of these viz take to render, 
I now have some more information, and this is going to be something that we're going to be looking to um, enhance over future releases as well. Um, and I can actually show all the overall time here um, for each visualization uh, by just simply toggling that value. So that's a very quick uh, sort of a whistle stop tour into some of the new capabilities that have been added to 11.1.5. Uh, I hope to continue um, adding more of videos like this one with just very simple, quick, uh, you know, here's what's new and here's what you can get excited for uh, with each subsequent release of Cognos Analytics. Hope you guys are excited. Thank you.